All right, so we're going to do a brief demonstration on the hardware left ventricular assist device. Uh, when going over the VAD devices, I always try to break it into four simple uh, categories. Components, settings, alarms, and emergency procedures. The components of the hardware left ventricular assist device consist of one pump, which is going to go into the left ventricle. There's an outflow graph that goes up to the aorta. And there'll be an electrical drive line that's threaded through the body and comes out the abdomen. The drive line on our demo will be demonstrated back here as if it were going to our patient so we can have a VAD that runs. The other components consist of uh, batteries. You have your main controller, which is your hard drive. Then there's the drive line that goes to the patient. And you also have a backup uh, controller should your primary controller fail. So those are major components of the hardware left ventricular assist device. Um, when talking about settings, we can look at our home screen here. And in the home screen, what you can see are RPMs, flow, and watts. RPMs are set. We set them. The recommended operating range is 24 to 3200 RPMs. The flow is calculated based on RPMs, watts, and blood viscosity. Uh, the blood viscosity we program into the pump, and we use the hardware monitor to do that, um, to program the patient's hematocrit from the lab uh, into the pump so that it can accurately calculate the patient's flow. If the hematocrit goes up, the flow will automatically drop because the blood is thicker and will move slower through the pump. If you, put the, if you drop the hematocrit down in the monitor, the flow will immediately be recalculated and be quicker. And looking at the front screen, just so you understand what the screen is, this here just tells you if you're plugged into the wall or not. Right now you are not. If you are plugged into the wall, that'll turn green. This is your silence button, which can silence low and medium alarms, and it can also be used to give you backlight so you can see the settings. This tells you you're using power source number one because it's lit up, and it also shows you how many bars of battery life that your battery currently has. Both batteries are at four bars, which is 100% of battery life. Each bar is approximately 25% of battery life. Uh, each battery will give you approximately four to six hours of battery life. Um, and each patient has four batteries, so that's important to note. Um, so, so far we've talked about components and settings, and then we're going to move along to alarms. There's three types of alarms on the hardware. Uh, there are low alarms, medium alarms, and critical alarms. Everybody's trained to fix low and critical alarms. Um, low alarms are all power source related alarms. Um, so if you're changing a battery and you take too long to change your battery, it'll tell you, hey, um, please reconnect battery one. So right now it gives you a soft beep, gives you a steady yellow triangle, and it tells you the message, power disconnect, and then it tells you what to do. Reconnect power one. So I'll reconnect power one. Always remember there's three types of uh, power sources you can have for the hardware. It always wants to be hooked to two power sources. That can be battery and battery, or battery and AC adapter to the wall, or battery and DC adapter to the car charger. So that was an example of a low level alarm. Medium alarms are going to give you a flashing yellow triangle and with a sound that sounds like do 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 do, do 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 do, do 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 do. And it's going to say low flow call. Uh, high watts call, suction call, you want to call your expert resource. Here you would call me, if you can't get a hold of me, you can call the perfusionist on call. There's also the hardware 24-7, um, 365 hotline, should we need to get a hold of the company to troubleshoot any, any problems on our patient. And then on to critical alarms. Uh, there's a couple different critical alarms. A critical alarm is going to give you a flashing red triangle, um, and it's going to give you a really loud sound. And for the most part, it's still going to tell you what the problem is, and then it's going to tell you what to do. So an example of a critical alarm, you can see it's very loud, flashing red triangle, and it says, VAD stop, connect driveline. So we just put the driveline back in. Unfortunately, you cannot silence a critical alarm. It needs to be fixed. Another example of a critical alarm, uh, this one's not going to give you a message. If you accidentally disconnected both power sources, it gives you a long sustained beep. You can see there's no message on the screen, and that's because there's no power to the pump. So don't ever disconnect both power sources at the same time. This is one example of an alarm that's not going to give you a message. There's only two interventions that you have to do where the device is not going to give you a message. One is what I just showed you if you accidentally remove both power sources. The other is if you come up to the device 
and you, your patient says they're not feeling good and you know you're hooked to power and you see the screen is blank and it's not giving you any information. If you have that situation, you should immediately change to the backup controller. Those are the only two times where you would have to do something when the VAD is not telling you what to do. 98% of the time, the device is going to tell you what the problem is and then it's going to tell you what to do. So make sure to always read and do what the VAD tells you to do. The last thing we're going to go over, if you, if you get a critical alarm and it says uh, controller fail, change controller, or if you have a blank screen and you're hooked to power, those are reasons you're going to change to your backup controller. And when we change to our backup controller, it's always going to be with the patient, or if we're in the hospital, it should be at the patient's bedside. The pacifier always lives in the backup controller. Um, and when we do that, this battle will be alarming, controller fail, change controller. We'll do pacifier, power, patient, which is the drive line. Failed controller should now shut up because you put the pacifier in it. We can put that to the side. Meanwhile, you're calling for help, calling for a code, and then making sure that your bad coordinator gets contacted and perfusion gets contacted. Double check your settings, make sure the patient looks okay, and then change your controller. That's how we would change our, to our backup controller. So please go ahead now and practice changing the controller.